Hello, I am the director of the Juan Latino Studies Seminar of the University of Granada. And one of the reasons I am here is because I want to tell you who Juan Latino was, because maybe you don't know about him, and he was an outstanding character. Um, but before I tell you who he was and how important he has been in my life and in my studies and my research, I would like to tell you, to ask you another question. And the question is, do you know that slavery existed in Renaissance Spain? Do you know anything about the fact that there were lots of slaves in Renaissance Europe, in Renaissance Italy, in Renaissance Great Britain? Or do you think that slavery was something related only to the ancient times and basically to the Roman times or the United States in the 19th century United States? Well, the thing is that um, slavery has existed all over the world. And when I started studying slavery in the history of Spain 20 years ago, everybody told me there are no slaves in Spain. You're not going to find any, any slaves in, in Europe. And then I continued studying and I went to their archives and I started, I started to find uh, historical documents. And in three years or four years, I found more than 2,500 records of slaves in Granada, in the city where I live and in the city where I am the director of the Juan Latino Studies Center. And so I realized how important slavery was. And then I realized that slavery existed all over Spain, not only in Granada, but in many places. And then I realized that at the same time that slaves were sold in Spain, the Spaniards were also being enslaved and sold in the north of Africa. So, and then I realized that in medieval Europe and in, in, in the beginning of the early modern Europe, the slaves were white. And that's the reason the word slave is slave, because it, it comes from Slavs, from the Russians and from the Circassians and from the Slavic people. They were the ones that were enslaved and sold in Western Europe. So slavery is actually not related to color. It's related to other things, and it has been a major thing in, the, in world history, in economic history, in the history of the world. And that's why I want to point out uh, the fact that we have been blind about the importance of slavery in, in, in the universal history. And I realized that slavery was in literature, it was in art, like Murillo, for example, uh, painted uh, black people who were from a slave origin. Velázquez also painted uh, the mulata, who is a, a, a woman slave. And also uh, Goya and other painters. And also it's in, in Golden Age Spanish literature. Cervantes, for example, Sancho Panza, he said that he wanted to become the king of Micomicón because he which is a, a, a kingdom in Africa, because he said he was going to bring a lot of slaves to Spain and become rich. And we find slavery in Lope de Vega, we find slavery everywhere. And so that's one of the reasons I, I, I thought that I had to continue doing my research in this area of studies. And then I realized also that the Medieval and early modern kingdoms of uh, sub-Saharan Africa also uh, enslaved other black Africans and they sold them to the Europeans. And we find slavery in Asia, we find slavery in India, we find slavery in China, we find slavery in Tibet. Even the Tibet of the Dalai Lama was a slave society. So we find slaves everywhere. And in all this cruelty, then I started to think, what is there inside the human beings that we want to enslave other people? Why do we want to turn people into objects? Why do we want to possess them, to possess their body, to exploit them, to exploit their labor? And in all this cruelty and in all this, this, this realizing how, how, how slavery has shaped the history of the world, in, slavery was abolished in Spain in Cuba. Cuba was a Spanish territory in 1889, so at the very end of the 19th century. So in all these contexts, in my own city, in the city of Granada, I found this astonishing character who is Juan Latino. And I really 
became very much involved with the, with the research about him. Because he was a young boy, a black boy. He was the first Afro-European that has written in Latin. He was the first Afro-European who wrote uh, creative literature in Latin. As a very young man, as a very young boy, he was a gifted kid. He was a very intelligent boy. And he was a slave of the Duke of Cesar, of the second Duke of Cesar. And the Duke of Cesar had a small son that was more or less the same age as Juan Latino. He was called Gonzalo. And Gonzalo was the master, and Juan Latino was his slave. And they grew up together. But the interesting thing is that Juan Latino was so intelligent, and he was so gifted, and so talented, that he started to study. He, he wanted to read. He wanted to learn. He wanted to, to, to express himself in correct Castilian. And, and then he started also to read Latin books. And his owner, who was uh, in the vicinity of Charles V, the emperor, uh, was a very, um, a very interesting man in the sense that he was a patron of arts. So he, he, he led Juan Latino study. And Juan Latino went to the University of Granada. And, and in, in 1546, he, he got the bachelor's degree, degree. And it's in the acts, in the first acts, acts of the University of Granada, we can find the record of him getting the bachelor's degree. And, and after that, uh, he became a doctor, and then he became professor of the University of Granada. And, we, and I have seen the records of the University of, of Granada where his name is written as professor of Latin. And because they are preserved, preserved in the archives of the University of Granada. And he wrote two main books in Latin. One was published in 1573, and the other one was published in 1576. Both books are preserved are at the Royal Library of the University of Granada, the books from the 16th century. We could say that Juan Latino is something like a Frederick Douglass in the United States, but three centuries before, because we're talking about Renaissance Spain. And that's the, the, the reason he was called Juan Latino, is because he mastered very much uh, Latin, and he published this book, and also, the interesting thing is that he married a noble woman who was called Doña Ana de, Carla, de Carleval, and they were one of the first mixed couples, legal mixed couple, living together in this city of Granada, in near Plaza Nueva, in the area of Santa Ana, in, in a small street that, that is just before the Cabrera Bridge that exists nowadays. And they had four children, and Juan and uh, Ana, they had the same name as their parents, and then also Bernardino and, and Ana. So, uh, it, so uh, it was a, a different family, and they were integrated and accepted. And he was so famous that even Cervantes dedicated him uh, some verses at the beginning of El Quixote. And even Lope de Vega in, in, the, in, the, in, in the comedy La Dama Boba wrote some verses about Juan Latino because he has been very important in the, in the, in the literature, in the history of Spain, in the Golden Age, uh, in Golden Age literature. And Jiménez de Antizo, who is a playwright from the 17th century, wrote uh, a theater play where Juan Latino was the protagonist and the main character. So I think he's important because he's a, he, 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 he child, he's, he's a metaphor of freedom, even, even though he was a slave. He's a metaphor of wisdom, and he's, he's a metaphor of challenging stereotypes. And so that's the reason uh, we have written a book for children, because we want him to be well known all over the world, because he thinks he can inspire other people and he can inspire children. So thank you very much.